Prime Minister Nguyễn Xuân Phúc sent message to commemorate UN 75th anniversary. Vietnam remains attractive for Singaporean investors. India funds seven water projects in Mekong Delta. MIOT to open an investigation into imported cane sugar from Thailand. Ho Chi Minh City's Lantern Street readies for Meat Autumn Festival. Hello, this is FBC News with Trinh Lê. Thanks for joining us in this week's program. Now, Prime Minister Nguyễn Xuân Phúc sent a message to the United Nations high-level meeting marking the 75th anniversary of the UN in New York on September 21st as part of the 75th session of the UN General Assembly. The meeting drew 137 senior state leaders and 33 ministers of UN member countries. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, leaders of states sent their video of the speech to air at the meeting. Recalling the great achievements the UN has gained over the past 75 years, the Prime Minister said that it would not have been possible without the fundamental principles of the UN Charter and the UN itself as a center for harmonizing the actions of nations. Noting that the world is facing unprecedented challenges, the Prime Minister underlined the need to work together in solidarity and strengthen multilateralism with the UN at its core with the strict implementation of the UN Charter and international law, along with respect for independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity of the states. The people must be at the heart of all efforts for development so that no one is left behind, the leader stressed. The Prime Minister took the occasion to extend to other UN member states the gratitude for entrusting Vietnam with a non-permanent membership at the UN Security Council for the 2020-2021 tenure. As the chair of ASEAN in 2020, Vietnam is working closely with other ASEAN member countries to build an ASEAN community of unity, resilience and prosperity. Vietnamese people are determined to work alongside all other nations around the world to safeguard peace and realize the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The Prime Minister declared, stressing that the Vietnamese flag will be flying at even more UN peacekeeping missions. The Vietnamese government's leader expressed his belief that with strong determination and joint actions, the brighter future for all will be built. Vietnam's growing stature in the region and the world at its impressive containment of COVID-19 have continued to consolidate its status as an attractive destination for Singaporean investors. Singapore is currently Vietnam's third largest foreign investor, with a total registered capital of more than 55 billion US dollar. It's led all investor in the first eight months of this year, pouring 6.54 billion US dollar into Vietnam. Among the Singaporean firms, Semcorp Development has long been present in Vietnam and worked with Bicamex IDC Vietnam to set up the Vietnam Singapore Industrial Park VSIP joint venture. Nine VSIP projects has been developed nationwide to date on a total areas of more than 8,600 hectares, supplying clean ground for nearly 900 businesses with combined investment capitals of more than 15 billion US dollars. Apart from investment, bilateral trade also surged in recent years to some 21 billion US dollars in 2019. Notably, export structures are complementary, which is an optimal condition for agricultural, aquatics and food products of Vietnam to expand their market shares in the city-state. Vietnam has also been making thorough preparations for welcoming FDI inflows by boosting ties between businesses and universities, colleges and vocational training centers to develop human resources building a more favorable legal framework and developing supporting industries, which are all critical to continuing to attract foreign investors, including those from Singapore. The Indian government will support seven water management projects in the Mekong Delta provinces of Bến Tre, Hậu Giang, Kiên Giang and Tiện Giang with non-refundable aid of $350,000. 
At a ceremony in the Delta Skinto City on September 23rd, representatives from the Indian Consulate General in Ho Chi Minh City and the localities signed seven memoranda of understanding for the projects, each worth 50,000 US dollars. They are part of the 26 quick impact projects funded by India in 22 Vietnamese cities and provinces, 13 of which have been completed, while 12 others will be launched during the 2020-2021 fiscal year. Speaking at the event, Indian Ambassador to Vietnam Rane Verma said the traditional relationship between the two nations is a successful model in terms of institutional support and capacity improvement in various fields over the past years. Deputy Head of the Foreign Ministry's General Economic Department Phạm Thị An said the activity is a symbol of the enduring friendship among member states of the Mekong Ganga Corporation MGC, as well as between Vietnam and India. The Mekong Delta has been facing drought and salt water intrusion at record levels. Rainfall this year is 30 to 40 percent lower than previous averages and is forecast to remain low in the future. The MGC is an initiative by six countries, including India and the five ASEAN countries of Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand and Vietnam. Launched in 2000, it is one of the longest-standing sub-regional cooperation mechanisms in the Mekong Delta, with the goal of enhancing solidarity and friendship among nations and promoting trade and economic development to contribute to improving people's lives in the Mekong and Ganga River basins. According to the Nikkei Asia Review, Vietnam, the world's biggest supplier of Robusta, has become the top supplier of coffee beans for Japan as the consumption of instant coffee, which uses Robusta, is soaring there amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The newspaper reported that more people are working at home during the pandemic, driving up demand for Robusta coffee beans, which are mainly used to make instant coffee. Meanwhile, sales of higher-quality Arabica beans favored by coffee shops have fallen. The trend has made Vietnam the world's top robusta maker, Japan's top supplier of coffee beans, and relegated Brazil to second rank. Now recently, the Ministry of Industry and Trade, MIOT, had just decided to initiate an anti-dumping and anti-subsidy probe for cane sugar imported from Thailand. Previously, since January 1st, Vietnam has removed import tariffs quotas for ASEAN countries. This led up to a sudden increase in the import quotas of cane sugar in the first eight months of this year, reaching a total of nearly 950,000 tons, six times higher than the same period in 2019. Notably, the import volume from Thailand accounted for the majority of the quotas, which became the main cause of damage to the domestic sugar industry. This probe is aimed to, in accordance to the laws, create an environment for fair competition and protect legitimate rights and interests in the context of international economic integration. As the Mid-Autumn Festival is approaching, the festive atmosphere becomes more and more vibrant in Ho Chi Minh City, with many activities taking place across the city. And due to the relatively tame COVID-19 situation, the Mid-Autumn Festival events this year does not only as Da Nang contains numerous construction with unique architecture and high aesthetics across the Han River, it has repeatedly been called with a loving nickname, the City of the Bridges. As the old saying goes, with age comes wisdom. Recently, the oldest among the bridges saw a unique transformation that surprises even the local citizens. Equal to the boat clearing height of Genti Li Bridge, which is 8.6 meters, this can be considered as a rare occasion when we even Joy Bridge was ready to allow the vehicles to pass by. For a little history, the Wynman Joy Bridge was built in the 1960s. This is the first roadway bridge to cross the Han Rivers until 2000s when Da Nang added the Han River Bridge. The Wynman Joy Bridge is also one of the bridges apt as a tourist destination. 
the center city of Da Nang has introduced a new virtual reality app that allows visitors to see objects on display at the Museum of Jamba Sculpture through three-dimensional scanning. Developers of the technology said that everything from uh, spatial depth to colors and images are reproduced completely to, to the original sculptures, providing visitors with visual satisfaction and urging them to explore the museum in reality. The service is available at the website appears on the screen, where visitors will be transported to the virtual museums to tour its four galleries of ancient Chamba treasures. Throughout the tour, visitors are presented with text and audio guides about 14 notable objects at the museums, ranging from Hindu and Buddhist deities and fertility symbols to sacred animals and architectural decorations, reflecting the rich cultural and religious life of ancient Chamba people. The information is available in Vietnamese and English to cater to both domestic and foreign investors. The over 100 years old Museum of Champa Sculpture in Da Nang is currently home to some extremely valuable collections of fine sculptural pieces of ancient Champa culture. Now that has wrapped up FBNC News for this week. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again next time, same time. Goodbye.